Are you serious? Hello, this is How to Kill an Hour. My name is Marcus Bronzy, joined by our Hugh Jackman lookalike. Producer Bill. <laughs> you were looking at me and like, Hugh Jackman? What are you talking about? Huge and jacked, man. Um, so, yeah, we like to kick off every single show before we get into our guest today. We have James Haskell talking about how we've been killing some time recently. Billy, how have you been killing time recently? How have I been killing some time? <clears throat> Clean version, please, sir. No the naughty ones. All right, mate. <laughs> TMI. So I've clean. been, I've been playing a bit of uh, Uncharted Three. You've been loving the retro games recently, haven't you? You've been loving turning back the clocks. Nothing wrong with that, Billy. Because great game. But what drew you towards Uncharted Three? Because um, I've been playing. I had an Xbox for quite a while, and I'll probably get the new Xbox at some point, as well as the PlayStation. But um, all right, money bags. Missed out on. Sorry. All right, money bags. <laughs> I missed out on. Um, we'll, we'll come back to that. Actually, I missed out on uh, Uncharted because uh, I didn't have a PlayStation. I've completed the first two, and I've just started the third one, and uh, I'm really enjoying the third one. So, and then the fourth one will be after that. So, it's a good oh, movie, yeah. a good game. Sorry, and it's being made into a movie by yeah. uh, the guy who plays Spider Man, um, Tom, Tom Holland. Tom Holland, yeah. Tom Holland, isn't it? Aren't they just great stories though? That's what I mean. Like with what PlayStation did with those exclusives is they get, they made sure that they were story heavy games. So whilst you've got a game on one side, which is like Among Us, where it's all about just playing around and being like sus and all that sort of stuff, yeah. This is like your you're a movie, isn't it? You are the you are the action hero, yeah. right? I mean, as I've grown older, I don't know what it I don't know what it is, but as I've grown older, I've kind of gravitated towards more single player games as well. Mm. Um, like I remember we've, we've spoken about Spider-Man that was a great game single player game um, I just, I'm just enjoying single player games Days Gone I completed that, that was good fun um, I just like playing games that are movie like that Cyberpunk um, I don't want to get involved in that at some point yeah. that's, that's going to be a long 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 game you've been smashing through them what's your key to getting through a game do you do like big blocks where you just punch through the game or do you take your time and plod around um, it depends, cause like, like a big game like Cyberpunk or Final Fantasy, that game I tend to take my time with um, and really take everything in. Other, other games that are maybe Spider-Man, I just like to go from mission to mission to mission rather than explore New York. As good as it is, I'd like to just do the, do the, do the movie slash game. Yeah, do the main challenges. See, I'm I'm kind of the same as you, but with Spider Man, I do like to go around and do the little uh, challenges because it means that you get upgrades. Do you know what I mean? I think if it, yeah. if it, if I didn't need to do those to kind of unlock extra bits on my like skill tree and stuff, I probably wouldn't. But because I want to have all of the powers, all of the power, then that's why I like kind of make sure I do it. Interesting though, man. Uncharted Three. Where I forget where we're at in the story with Uncharted Three. Where, what's happening with Nathan Drake? I think Uncharted Three. I think he's going back. So you you play young Nathan as at the mm. beginning. Yeah. You see how he became who he is. Quote, how he quote, became today. the man he is. We should get that guy that does that voice on the show, shouldn't we? How he became. Oh. In a, in a, in a, in. Yeah, in a, in a summer. That's terrible. In a summer. Coming to cinemas near you. Anyway, right. How have I been killing time recently? Uh, a couple of ways, Bill. Uh, DJI dropped the OM4. OM4. Yeah, it's a foldable stabilizer designed to complement your smartphone, allowing you to use recordings, or allowing you to record straight away. Basically, what you do is you clip your phone onto it and it gives you smooth footage, right? That's what it does. That's what the whole basis of this product is. But as we're at the fourth iteration now, this gimbal has got a load of extra things in it. One of the cool things about the OM4 bill is that it's got a magnetic design. So you get this little clip that goes around your phone and you can just clip it onto the OM4 or take it off. One of the things that is frustrating with a gimbal is sometimes you just want to have your phone and use your phone as your phone and clap it onto the gimbal real quick. Uh, the OM4 with the magnetic connection really helps you do that. And you can leave, I think you can just have a clip that goes around your phone, or if you want to, you can actually stick the metallic bit to your phone as well with a ring holder. Obviously, because I was using it and, you know, we're just using it from DJI and sending it back. I use the magnetic phone clamp, which went around it, which meant I could have my phone and then just slap it onto it nice and easy. Um, it's got loads of intelligent modes via its app where you can actually track people, faces and movement, which gives really nice footage when there's movement around, but you're tracking a person. It's called Active Track 3.0. 
It's pretty cool. Uh, it's also got a story mode where you can film a few clips and it puts them together with music, which is, I guess it's all right, you know, but, you know, I, I like it. But, you know, for me, really, I, I kind of like to just shoot stuff and edit it together afterwards. But one of the coolest things it's got is this thing called dynamic zoom. Now, the best way of me explaining it, Bill, is there's a scene in Jaws, right, where the camera zooms into one of our characters. Uh, I can't remember his name. Oh, let me remember. Uh, Jaws, camera zooms. Uh, I'm not Googling it. Camera zoom scene. I promise I'm not. But if you Google camera zoom uh, scene, it's a dolly zoom that they use. Um, I can't remember the characters. But basically what you do is, to do it in real life, it's really tricky. You have to zoom out whilst pushing the camera towards the person. And it gives this really cool effect where the person that's in focus stays the same size, but all of the background behind them moves in this weird way. And uh, you can do that with the on four, basically digitally. Uh, it will lock onto someone's face. And as you move towards them, it will zoom out or zoom in as well. Really cool dramatic effect, which I messed around with. In fact, I did some uh, good play rounds that I pop up on my social medias as well. Uh, it's also got clone me pano where you can do like panoramics where you're in one position uh, where it'll take a few pictures of you and make you look like you're in three places at once, which is awesome. Uh, and it's also got gesture control as well, where you can actually take a selfie with a group of people by doing certain movements uh, and use it hands-free too as well, which is pretty cool. I mean, what they've done here with the OM4 is they've not, apart from like the, the special dynamic zoom that they've got, they've not made it so much full of packed new packed full of new features they've just made it easier to use i feel like it tracks better it's a smoother experience it charges quickly it's just a simple way of having a gimbal on your phone and now with the power of the iphone 12 pro and the pro max i dare to say this you could have i'm not going to say cinema quality because i'm not disrespecting people that have got their red cams and expensive cams you've got really high quality footage in your pocket stabilized looking good there we go. I realized I just ran it at you, Billy, about it. But yeah, so we tried it out. Thumbs up from me. I really like it if you want to stabilize your footage, man. Good for days out and shooting friends. And also, if you want to get into like doing YouTube and vlogging and stuff like that. Sounds like a decent, like a very powerful um, piece of equipment. It doesn't, I've looked, just looking online, it doesn't seem too expensive either. It's rather uh, kind on your, on your wallet. Yeah. I mean, how much, how much is it going for now, Billy boy? The OM4 is 140 pounds. There well, you go. 139 to be exact. So you can stabilize your footage even more so than you can with your phone. And I mean, if you're looking for a micro setup and you already have a phone and you want to vlog, there you go. No special cameras needed. No nothing. You've got that. And, you know, you can put it on a stand. It can do time lapses and stuff like that as well. It's, it's decent. It's pretty cool, man. Um, the other way I've been killing time as well, will it boy, is speaking of iPhone stuff, right? This is a setup, really. This is less, less of the full review, but... We got our hands on the iPad Pro a little while back. And the reason we haven't spoken about it on the show is because after looking at the specs of it, Bill and I realized that it's extremely powerful, isn't it, Bill? Like, yeah, really powerful. And we also kind of looked at what its capabilities are. And I feel like because this new iPad Pro has got a trackpad on it and a keyboard that you get at the case, you can actually kind of use it. You, you can, I think you can connect a, a Bluetooth mouse to it as well, which is what we'll be discussing in the future. I feel like we're in a position now where we can actually have the real life conversation of MacBook Pro or iPad Pro. How would each one differ in performance for day to day? Now, I'll be honest with you and the listener, like, Bill, like, uh, Bill is it fair to say actually that all of our content that we create requires the use of a MacBook Pro every day, right? Yeah, I mean, like video editing, audio editing, uh, Photoshop, and yeah. general text work. Exactly, and, and I'm a fan of Apple. Like, that's not, a, that's not anything I'm trying to hide. I'm a big fan of their products and their ecosystem. I'm well in it. But can an iPad Pro perform as well as, or maybe even outperform a MacBook Pro in certain areas if we try and use it instead of a MacBook Pro. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be swapping my iPad Pro out for the MacBook Pro. And I'm going to be purely trying to use it to create all of my content for a certain amount of time. And I'd like to share the findings with you because I think it's a real life conversation. Now, when you look at the price point, you are looking at laptop costs of the iPad Pro. So can it do everything a MacBook can do? 
or can it do things better or where are its limits? I think we can all kind of imagine where some of the limits are, but I really want to explore that. And we'll be talking about that in future shows. You know, can you record a podcast with an iPad Pro? Can you uh, edit multi-cam footage? You know, that kind of stuff, Bill. So we'll really be exploring that over the next few weeks. Um, so once we've got all of that content together, it'll be really good having that conversation with you on the pod, man. Cool. I look forward to hearing and uh, seeing more. Cheers. Now, um, going from one pro to another pro, pro content to, or shall we say, pro content creation machine to um, a pro athlete. James Haskell is joining us on How to Kill an Hour. Uh, James has been on the show a few times before. He's even reviewed some tech with us. So he's not going to be doing that with us today. We're going to be talking about his new book. But before Haskell and I discuss that, I think it's only right we ask him for what his lockdown lowdown is. Mate, well, first of all, I was feeling good about myself, but when I've seen the depth in your lid, that is unbelievable. You are channeling some inner kid and play vibes. Uh, you look like, a, you know, like a, a younger gentleman off a, a sort of Nickelodeon show <laughs> circa 15 years ago. Oi, the fresh prints, you're pulling up in the cab, you know, a, sm- a, ch- a smell you later, or you can comb that out. Wait, have I asked you what you've been doing in lockdown? that motherfucking Afro thing that you're growing is what you've been doing. Cause that has got, so, I'm so jealous that if I ran a comb through this, it would just peel off. Look at I'll it. tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'm working for a lot now. You're looking a little bit thinner on the top there, James, man. Mate, I'll tell you what, I'm do you want, so want me to lend thin. you a bit? I'll lend you a bit Wait, if you want. The thing is, the worst thing is, it actually looks like the top of a microphone cover like, in front of you. I reckon, I reckon at night, you unclip that and you put it on a, on a, on a head. And just, right. Cause I would, I could, if oh. I, I'd roll that, unclip that and send it to me in the post. All right, I, I, kn- I know this is going to make bad podcasting, but I'm going to send James a link to an Instagram post of mine, yeah? And he's going to see yeah. what I look like after um, I get um, a haircut where I uh, ask my barber to keep it real, real round for me. Let me get this link and send this to you. <laughs> <Real round. laughs> Wait, mate, everything I do, whenever I go to my barber, I just let you go, mate, uh, and he goes, what do you need? And I was like, skull fade. And we just skull fade this in real tight. Or we, we, or, or we thin this out, we spread it, we glue it down, and then we're in. I hope we have All right. link here. I'll send James a picture. Mate, this is unbelievable. Scene, but I accept content. Yeah. Oh, it says, sorry, this page isn't available anymore. Is it not? Oh, God. Too damn sexy for the gram, yeah? Imagine that. Imagine that. Oi, you've actually... They, they, the the internet. so bad. They've, t- they've taken it off the internet. Oh, I mate. Um, oh. I know. I'm on, I'll have a look at another time. I'll tell you what, All right. you have to screenshot it. In a, I'll, I'll it screenshot in a it and I'll send it to him. All right, let's, let's send James the, this. All right. Look at this. Live, live zoom in. If you're bored now, what you can I do is just that. fast forward 30 seconds. All right? Right yeah, here we go. Yeah, don't worry, but because are we not a visual medium? We're only an audio bit medium in this. Uh, oh, we got. Well, it might clip this depending on how much you rinse me, James. I don't know. There we go. Oh, oh, oh here we are. Shared file. Let's have a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Let's check this out. It's just going to download. Hopefully, it's not a dick shot because I do not need that. <laughs> That'd in be my life. great, isn't it? It's just a massive afro of my balls oh. right below. Oh, <laughs> it hit me up with straight with that. Oh, wait, I'm really not feeling good about myself in comparison to the hair game. If you show me some massive piece that's just going to rattle me, I'll have to go and have a lie down. Um, it's still, it's still, still downloading. Hold on, I'm. Uh, I was. Sent- We've broken James's internet because I've sent him. Oh yeah, it's fine. Uh, sorry, my, my wife asked me. Right here we are. It's loaded. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> mate. <laughs> That is unbelievable. It's like it's like the hair was there originally and you you bolted your head to it. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Marcus, I bet I tell you what, I don't know if you're I don't know if you're married, you've got a partner, but you must be combing some treacles out of that. Dave, tell you what. Just just <sighs> doesn't get any better than that. I, ch- I channeled my inner sixties, seventies, eighties vibe and just combined it with the roundest afro. My, I feel like my, my my barber was on his zenith that day. He was on his best. Mate, he, you know what, there's not hair out of place. And I, I, have you ever seen the movie Semi Pro or something like that? That you're like, you're like, you look like a pimp from. Uh, I was watching. Um, there's, there's like movie like Dirty Harry. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Early seventies, early seventies, late sixties. Yeah. Fur coat, cane, Cadillac, Mate, gold ready. with extenders, and you just bowling out like. Tss, yeah. Tss, yeah. Tss, you know I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep this hair for next October, mate. I think you got my next Halloween outfit sorted, mate. I'm going to go mate. as a pimp. Oh, you should just start calling me a cracker and everyone else a jive turkey. And I'll be like, <laughs> I'll be like this silly cracker. I'll be like, oh my God, where are we? We've transported back. You could, honestly, if you had four other members, you'd be the Jackson 5 in that mix. 
Oh yeah, mate. Oh, but I just got to get four mates to go in Afro, which I don't think they're going to do. You know, <laughs> I you know love what? that. But that is good. I love that. Is, honestly, but look at it. I love it. The depth, the volume. Does it smell nice? It smells delicious. I don't listen oh. when you get long. When you get longer hair, because obviously usually I got a short hair. I just give it a little wash in the shower and that. Now yeah. I wash, condition this. I usually put some product in it, so it's got some texture as well. Yeah, but I, I ain't be bothered today because I didn't. Can I, can I tell you bothered. something? I used to play with a teammate called Ashley Johnson, right? So if you, if, if those listeners want to go Ashley Johnson, and he, he had a, a very famous um, kind of long, kind of a real big lid, long curly hair, played for Wasps, played for South Africa a couple of times, used to play for the Cheetahs, a lovely guy, right? When he used to walk past you, if it was like a cartoon, there would just be these butterflies and flowers and smells just coming off him of the greatest smelling stuff. And John, you know it was, what? he used to tresemme, condition tresemme his lid every day. And it was the best smelling thing because it was so voluptuous. You would get tackled and you'd sort of land in this cushion. And for a minute, you'd think you were, you'd think you were lying into your, you know, cuddling into your missus. You were like, yeah. oh my God, this is just so relaxed. And they'd be like, oh shit, it's Ashley. Guff, you know, get away. But mate, I tresemme for the for the longer lid. Apparently, I'm not endorsed by them. It smells like heaven. I'll give I'll give it a go. Maybe that's a good movie, like the predator that he was. You know, like how you have like the fish that have the tongue that looks like a worm to to, yes. to kind of attract other fish. That's what he did with his hair. He made you feel relaxed, put you at ease, and then beat the shit out of you on the rugby pitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then sickled you like a scythe on a farm. You were like, Ash, <laughs> Ashley, it's so good to see you. <laughs> You'd be like, oh my god. Anyway, James, how's lockdown treating you, mate? We spoke a little bit earlier in the year when we were like, oh, crazy lockdown. Can't wait for a couple of months to go by where we all go back to normal. And look at us. End of 2020. How are you feeling, mate? Um, how am I feeling? I am good. Um, I sort of, I would try it slightly rudderless at the moment because everything I do was sort of public facing as we talked about before. Um, I think this lockdown it's sort of not really a lockdown. I know I'm going to get criticised that. Is that everyone's sort of like, yeah, we're doing lockdown, but that's what we're not really doing lockdown because, yeah. I mean, you know, being I'm not COVID denial or anything else. I know people have lost their lives and I'll check my, my, my privilege for a second, but I will say that... Uh, you know that that um, the government. You know, if you if you got the Imperial University, I disagree with Oxford, who's disappearing with Cambridge, who's disappearing with the National Board. You know, uh, thing of statistics, and nobody can understand actually what is happening. And you know, we were going to lose five thousand a day, and now we're not, and losing less. Nobody can agree. Masks don't work. Masks do work. I'm sort of just getting on with my stuff. Um, it, since I spoke to you, my book came out, which was great. I've launched another podcast. Uh, I've sort of. You know, I, I love you guys and what you do and, and how to kill a how to kill an hour. But I, I, I kind of get an ask like twice a day for some bizarre reason to come on people's <laughs> podcasts, and I'm sort of like I'm so bored of it. I'm doing my good, the bad, the rugby. I launched another <laughs> podcast with my wife called Couples Quarantine, yeah. which is all about relationships, sex, uh, and everything, which is sort of co- causing some controversy and is putting it in the Daily Mail every time and getting my my mother calling me up. Like, James, hello. It's not really true you've shagged a thousand women, is it? And I'm like, no, mum. No, it's way more. Um, and um, but, and, but then the best bit about that is people then look at me and go, fuck, mate, he's lucky he's done one. Look at the state yeah. of him. He's ugly. Um, so that's gone down. And then obviously I... I I, I launched a podcast called What a Flanker, the podcast, and my autobiography was called What a Flanker. Yeah. That's been brilliant. That's me channeling my inner Joe Rogan. Um, that's very much me kind of... Uh, getting to actually be the interviewer, talking, not trying to be the funny guy. And I've had some so many interesting people, you know, had Roman Kemp on talking about, uh, you know, what it's like to be famous parents and the kind of mad fan syndrome. Uh, you know, Dylan Hartley, former England captain, on his approach to leadership because it's really unique. Um, Jay Morton, you know, from SS Who Dears Wins about leadership and, and, and you know, being you know, doing stuff to the point of excellence and what separates them. James Smith, you know, are, are, are being outspoken and controversial, mate. It's been so interesting. I sort of sit back in, in awe, really. Yeah, man. Well, you, well, in short, you've been active as you ever are. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I, we, I don't think we... Did we speak about the book on the last pod? I don't think we did, you know. But, no, um, no. Yeah. But what the oh, flank are... I've got a dog. I've got, you got a, a dog as well. As well. Yeah, All right. I don't know where he is. He's supposed to be around somewhere. We, but I'm going to see if the dog will the dog kind of nip in at some point and check no, you. He, he, he will. He's only five months old. Basically, he was. Um, I love this as well. I said, well, there's a few things I've learned. Right, I always like dogs, but I know dog people can be a little bit mad. Basically, you could say whatever you want on the internet, but if you then you say you've got a dog. All is forgiven. Like I, I, I post something controversial, and everyone's like, "Oh, what a dickhead!" I post a picture of a dog. 
7,000 comments all show me pictures of their dogs. Oh my God, our dog's great. You're like, okay, everyone calm down. But he was, and then the other thing is people go, oh, so I suppose you got him from a puppy farm, you know? And I went, and actually my thing is, no, actually get fucked. He was a rescue. Uh, he's five months old. They couldn't look after him. So I've, uh, so I've got him and he, we've only had him about a week and a half. And he is the loveliest thing. And my wife has gone from being like, oh, dog people. I oh, just, you know, I never understand dogs to, being that dog person. Like I tried to wake it up the other night because it was like, we're going to bed. And I went, Oi, Bertie, come and, uh, you know, come to bed. Right. And she went, no, shh, don't frighten him. And she's like, Bertie, oh. Bertie. And I was like, Oh my God. I said, it's a dog. It's not human being. It's not going to get upset. She's like, you're going to get it too excited. I was like, Chloe, come on. But she's been amazing. And, and it absolutely loves her. It's actually sitting on the sofa next to her now. I can see watching her. Oh, but what, what is Bay? What kind of dog is Bay? What breed? He is a f fox red Labrador, uh, which is a quite not 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 a rare breed. But basically, people are familiar, obviously, with the, the blonde uh, blonde Labradors. Then you get black Labradors. Then you get the um, chocolate brown Labradors, yeah. which are insane. And now you've got a fox red. So he he has sort of, I mean, he's kind of the colouring of almost like a a Ridgeback, a Rhodesian Ridgeback, kind of that sandier red colour. Um, but, mate, honestly, he is so good looking. Um, and you know, having him five months, we sort of missed a bit of the, the, the potty training stage. But I'm just t taking him outside, training him, you know, trying to do stuff on the whistle. Um, mm. The only thing with it is, is that we're, we're feeding him proper food. Like, there's this really interesting thing called Rate My Dog Food, his website. Yeah. And obviously, I'd never really taken – I mean – we talk about nutrition and stuff. We've talked about it on your, on, with you before, my other books, and bits and pieces, but you rate my dog food and something like Pedigree Chum gets 12% on this dog food thing because it's like, and I, you know, I, I allegedly, I'll be very careful not to get myself sued, but on the, on the, um, on the thing, it says something like, you know, 60% ash, 80% carbohydrate. So no wonder your dog goes completely mad because it's just eating sugar yeah. uh, and gets fat. So this other stuff we've got is 97% uh, is actually, it's raw food and it looks like something you'd want to eat. It's like a pr high protein, it's not like 80% protein, 20% carbs, um, r unbelievable nutrition. But the problem is there's also some natural snacks that smell like death. <laughs> and, and the dog trainer, I think, was taking a piss. Got a lovely guy called Andy from Canine um, Canine Club, and he he gave Bertie a full cow's ear as a treat. As a as a as a treat, like they they have, you know, you get like tendons yeah. and all these kind of beef tendons. Mate, a furry black cow's ear, right, with the fur still on it, and he's been, and he's been eating it for two days. And it's gone nowhere. And the smell on it, I basically took him out for a walk this morning and just threw it in the bin. Because the funny thing was, <laughs> he runs through the house. He's only small with this cow ear that's as big as his head. And he's so pleased to see you. And you're like, you're like gagging because you're like, this is oh. so rank. But also so funny because there's a cat, furry black cow ear lying on your floor. But mate, the stench of it. You know, and then he tried to get, offer me some beef testicles. And they also offered me as well, which I've got in the cupboard. A trachea, so the throat of a cow that they eat, they eat. And you're like, and the thing is, it's in the cupboard. And I like, I want to sort of partly like get it out when people come around. But he, mate, he just eats this stuff and they can't get enough of it. There's something in, in his bed. I mean, like, it's a visual thing, but this, I don't know what this is, but it's a bit closer to the like, camera. Let's have a, let's have a little oh, look. Mate, what is that? It looks like, it looks like. It looks like tendon. It looks like a the tendon, like a, of something. It looks like a valve a, or something. Was a it a valve, tendon? Yeah, yeah. It could be a heart valve oh, or something. Mate, and the smell. It smells like utter death. He can't get enough of it. So if we're eating, because I can't buy dogs who sit up and like, you know, get in your face. You give him one of them, mate. You could be eating. You know, Nobu next. I mean, I don't want a dog. I don't know why a dog would like Nobu. <laughs> like, 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 oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, he's like, he, he only he only eats at Michelin star restaurants. Um, so whatever whatever would be the ultimate dog thing. Yeah. He sits and chew and he works out for four hours and won't disturb you. I mean, so it's great. So you put up with the smell, but you but but yeah, he's great. Nice. I just realised is is your dog ginger? Is that a cute way of calling your dog ginger? By the way, the the colour of it, red. You got a ginger. Well, I think you'll find that he's actually African sunset. Oh, he's African <laughs> sunset. He's 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 old autumn splash. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's sort of Terry's chocolate. Or no, he's not. <laughs> I mean, actually, the thing is though, we have to be very careful because um, 
Obviously, 2020 is kind of the year of, of, of finally, you know, actually raising some awareness around around uh, the, the continued sort of lack of, of uh, progress around race and everything else. But as I've always said, I put funny comments up there. So when I put like, um, you know, what's it, there, was a, there was a shoe, uh, there was a picture of a shoe and a ginger person. I said, what's the difference between a ginger person and a shoe? <laughs> One's got a soul. And, uh, <laughs> right, right. And the thing is, you're like, ha ha, this is so funny. There's some irate gingers who are basically oh, yeah. cl- claiming that, that we are equally race, being equally racist to them. And I'm like, so it's a very, it's a minefield now. So I, I do, we, everybody laugh, loves laughing at ginger, but I remember reading on the radio some time ago that this place is woman who went to a bank and uh, she had a, she had a two kids and she had red hair and the kids didn't have red hair. And this bank clerk has basically gone, done the work and gone, oh, you must be pleased that, uh, that hasn't, they haven't followed you. What do you mean? She went, well, the kids aren't ginger. And she was like, <laughs> and, and obviously, obviously she's gone and fully complained, called up yeah. like the, the ginger, the ginger action relief hotline. The bloke's lost it. Rightly, the bloke, you can't say to somebody. You don't tell a mum, I'm glad that your kids don't look like you. You don't yeah. say that yeah. regardless yeah. of what they look yeah. like. Yeah. So, so it's, but it's a very controversial thing. So I've now had to rethink all my stuff actually. But then I, but then I'm wondering whether when the Australians keep calling us POMs, I'm whether whether I need to possibly step, you know, to step in, but I don't think I need to water down what is actually some very serious and potentially, you know, finally some progressive stuff around race. Um, But I'm sort of tentative about getting into the gingers, but no, he's not a ginger, but if he was, it would be lovely. Sure, sure, sure. Cool. I yet to see the dog. If it does jump into frame, I'll update you listener and let you know um, whether it is a ginger or not. It's still out there. It's, it's so it's an it's alleged ginger, ginger right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, it, is, it, is it a ginger nut? Is there a faint smell of urine on ginger nut biscuits? <laughs> no, it's not. No. <laughs> Oh, well, good to see you're in good spirits, mate. Lockdown part two isn't isn't crushing you at all. So yeah, the book, mate. Um, I, te- I had to text you when I read it. I was like, fucking class, like quality book. Like, uh, don't I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass. It was a fun adventure into the world of James Haskell of present and past as well, man. So what the flanker like when you decided to put this book together? Did you have? did you kind of want to be careful about how you kind of angled it? Because I think everybody wants, the first thing they want out of a rugby player is give us the stories. Give us the stories and that's it. And you, I feel like you gave us a good balance in the book, mate. Look, I mean, it was one of those things. Did, when you were a young player, do you ever think that you're going to write an autobiography? Do you think you're worthy of writing an autobiography? And I, you know, I never, I was never kind of laboured under the, assumption that I was going to have that career. And people will still say, you probably don't have a career des- deserving. But actually... I felt that I was able to straddle the line between giving the very best version of myself, having, you know, on reflection without talking myself up, a pretty dis- distinguished queer, uh, queer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's chapter I seven. Distingu- that's chapter seven. Where did you get into that? I, oh, great. I actually have had a distinguished queer a few times, but um, uh, I, a distinguished career, um, you know, and, but I also combined it by being myself, having a personality, yeah. traveling around the world, breaking some norms, being, you know, equally liked and equally hated it and managing to do that and kind of doing it irregardless of what other people would have, would have said and kind of, you know, not, you know, not giving in when I, when I could have done. And the idea behind the book was that once I'd started my, you know, I, there's an original podcast that I used to do before we, um, before we came onto the, the good, the bad, the rugby. Um, and both of those were equally really popular with, um, and one was called House of Rugby and one and now it was called the good, the bad, the rugby. And both of them were equally popular with um, with people. And I realised that people enjoyed my stories. And also, you know, way before that, I, I was asked to speak at a lot of dinners and I, and had sort of a lot of, lot of um, kind of luck with that stuff. So when I wrote the book, I wanted it to be, to show the fun side, to show the adventures, to show the the real positive stuff that I, that I had in my career, but to tell the truth, to right a few wrongs, to um, essentially uh, give my side. Because when you're when you're a team player, you can't. Sometimes you've got to do what's best for the team. Sometimes you've got to you know eat humble pie, and you can't. Unfortunately, if you want to have a career in life, sometimes you've got to. Um, play the political game and yes every walk of life has mavericks and everything we you know we wouldn't have achieved some stuff if, if people hadn't turned around and gone you know no I'm not going to take this you know we talked about race earlier for example if Rosa Parks hadn't said actually no I'm 
I'm not going to get off this fucking bus. Would we have still had segregation? Would we have still had that man? In it? Would it not have sparked things? You know, with Emily Pankhurst throwing herself in front of a horse, you know, would we have got the woman's vote? There are these people, but actually in sport, there's actually no need to to um, to kind of really uh, to, to do that. And, I, I, you know, the book was an opportunity to, to tell the stories, to have fun, but also uh, have some serious moments, but without being like Alan Partridge in his fictional book, you know, Bouncing Back, where every chapter finishes, needless to say, I had the last laugh, because I think that's a little bit funny. I feel like it was a book that um, appeals to people that aren't into rugby as much like don't I'm, I'm into rugby but I wouldn't say I'm the most into rugby out of everyone I feel like if you have no interest in the sport of rugby there's still a great read to be had there because like you said it's kind of your mem not Alan Partridge style but it's got your memoirs and I feel like it's James Haskell including some of the rugby bits as well when you every story yeah. that you talk about rugby even when you talk about the progression of sort of your career or experiences of certain clubs whether, whether they be positive or negative I feel like you kind of make sure that you open the door so that if you are someone who's ignorant to the world of rugby you feel included and there's enough story in there for you to partake in it look there are plenty um, of better autobiographies go that go into deep rugby depth you know, I didn't want to create a book, which which was basically, you know, I, you know, my mum took me to rugby when I was five. You know, I always wanted to be there. You know, during this game against South Africa, we were 10 minutes down and Johnny Wilkinson turned to me and he was like, we need, you know, that, that's been done. I, I don't, I didn't get into rugby to tell those stories. I got into about the personalities, the camaraderie, the stories, the scrapes, the achievements, the negatives, the highs and the lows. So the whole book is, I wanted this book to be popular with people who never watch the game of rugby. And, and that the point was that, it, it, you know, from chapter one, this is the thing I get from chapter one, people are, are messaging me like in, in hysterics. I can't stop laughing because, you know, I, I had to condense down all the best bits and worst bits into a book. And I remember I did a, 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 an interview with BBC Five Live and the, the, the female journalist, you know, her angle was, well, you know, I thought the drinking culture in rugby had changed. I thought you're professionals. When are you boys going to grow up? And my, my point to her was, listen, if I wrote a book about all the times that I stayed at home and had a protein shake and went to bed at seven o'clock, it's not really going to sell, is it? You know, the, the whole point, the underlying story about everything in that book was it took my, I had unbelievable dedication to my career. I went above and beyond to get the best out of myself. I, I, struggled, I struggled with criticism, self-doubt, um, you know, negativity. I was obsessive about lots of things. But do you know what? We did have a few crazy piss ups and this is what happened. This is what happened to this. And we made a few scandals and, and this is where it went. And, and that's, that's the nature of the, of the book. And I, and I, I work with a fantastic ghostwriter. So my other three book or four books I've written um, were all around uh, health and fitness, which I wrote myself. You know, I wanted to have a ghostwriter a guy called Ben Dears who, who captured my narrative voice really well. And he wrote it. And basically, you know, I then, when we got the final draft through, I sat, sat down with Chloe and I said, look, read this and she read it as she always does amazing she was like um i said does it sound like me and she went no but it's an amazing book and i i was like no no no, i don't want this because some people get these sports books written and they never read them i was like no no no, no. I, I sat down for you know 12 three-hour interviews with this guy so i went back and rewrote it because i love the process out of all the books i did i found this the most cathartic process i enjoyed it you know I basically rewrote about 60,000 words, added about 30,000 words to the total by the time we got there, made sure that, 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 my, that every fibre of that book was me in conjunction with Ben's kind of exquisite writing. It worked. It worked really well. So you suddenly had a book which was my voice, the way I told things, you know, even some of the crass bits where, you know, he probably wouldn't have put them in. I, 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 I went with it. And uh, the feedback's been phenomenal. You know, Sunday Times bestseller for, you know, three or four weeks. Um, you know, number two on the Saturday Times, you know, bestseller list. I think we've done about 80,000, maybe 90,000 copies so far. It's only been out four weeks. And it's, you know, but the also thing is the audio book, the opportunity to read your own book uh, and do, do the impressions, do the voices was it's brilliant. I'm just very proud. And I think it's actually changed people's perspective of me. You know, the, I, I've told you before when I've done the, your, 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 your great podcast that, you know, people sort of go, Matt, you know, do you James Askell? I'm like, yeah, I, go, I used to think you're a wanker, but I've seen you and I'm a celebrity and I really like you. And you're like, okay, brilliant. Mm. But actually I'm getting people going fucking out. You know, I knew that you had a lot of criticism. I knew you went through this, but I didn't realize how bad, I didn't realize how bad you've been stitched up and let down. And you know, people really enjoy it. And I think during a period of lockdown, I was able to bring some cheer because the predominant thing that I like to do is make people laugh. You know, I am the arch performer, 
re, you know, slash show off. And uh, I'm able to give people that humor and, and they, and they seem to really love it. Yeah, man. Uh, was there anything that when you wrote the book or when you had the interviews, was there anything in there that kind of didn't quite make it? Like, was there anything yes. in there you like, ah, oh, yeah, I can't yeah, do yeah, this. There was, I, mean, I mean, we had a barrister, so we had a barrister read, like a top barrister <laughs> read over it twice. Um, because, you know, listen, we live in a litigious, <laughs> yeah. litigious world right. now, mate. You know, mate. everybody's like offended, change, change your mind. You know, I'm, I'm currently in, involved in two other legal battles I can't talk about, which are, which are, you know, around stuff like this. So, you know, if I was going to come after people and give what I felt was a honest criticism, so I gave honest criticism on Stuart Lancaster and his, his regime when he was England coach, Martin Johnson, his regime. You know, I've got the utmost respect for these guys. They're both brilliant people, but I, I wanted to give my, my version, you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't critical for the sake of critical and I wasn't personal. But if you're going to say the truth, you know, you need to make sure you're covered. So I'd barrister read through it twice. I had a lot, my, my agent, my old agent was a lawyer. He read through it. And I got my current agent to read through it as well. And there was three things that I took out. There was a story about um, a time in Paris, which actually on reflection, when I read it, I was like, I don't think we can say this because, you know, that's, that's, and then there was a couple of things where I, I referred to people as a snake and someone else saying, and they were like, look, you can't, you can't do that. So um, we, yeah, I, ch I changed those stuff, but everything else I'm happy with. And do you know what? unless somebody's trying to gather a whole load of evidence to come against me, I have had no, I've had no problems with it at all. The only, there was a guy called uh, Chris Ratu, who's a, a journalist in New Zealand who hadn't read my book, who basically just criticized it on the extracts and basically slagged me off. But he is, uh, he's basically a gutter press sort of, um, snake. Guy says whatever no, he says. <laughs> snake. Yeah, snake. Yeah, yeah, snake. He basically said that I'm, you know, that I, you know, that basically the book was called what a, what a wanker. Well, what yeah. a flanker. And he was what yeah. a wanker. And it was, but without reading the book. So, I mean, if, if you want to do a critique of a book, you don't read it, you know, you're always going to find that, you know, but anyway. Yeah. Fair enough. L listen, mate, good to hear that it's doing good numbers and genuinely a good read. Like if I thought it was all right, I probably wouldn't have said anything to you about it. But I did literally I messaged you, I was like, mate, fuck you know, class. I think I was like halfway through, I was like, yeah, this is a it's no, a good I read it really flows well. That. Yeah. I mean, like we said, look, you know, you've got me on to talk about technology, you know, at the air, air, yeah. you know, AirPod Pros and you know, beats and stuff. You give me an honest answer. There's no point giving a vanilla a vanilla appraisal. And and look, yeah. I know that, you know, you wouldn't have said anything if you didn't really like it. And I really appreciate it because it's it's important, you know. You do, we, we've done stuff together, but you don't know me that well. And I think actually reading a book that and seeing someone, you kind of understand a little bit more about where someone comes from and what they yeah. do. And also, you know, you, you f I'd like to think that people, when they write autobiographies, they sex everything up. They're like, you know, that's why I asked. I, I once interviewed Arthur Benga. And I was talking to him and in his book, he talked about his kind of creation of this genius football and stuff. And I, and I said to him, you know, when you were doing all this stuff, did you have all this in your, your mind as the master plan or did it happen by chance? And you ultimately then gone, oh, that's what I was doing. And this is why I was doing it. And he didn't necessarily answer the other question, but a lot of people, when they do do these things, they go, well, this was a master stroke. And I always knew that if I'd done this, when in reality, they flipped a coin, they went with it, and, and nine out of 10 coaches get fired, one stumbles on something, and suddenly he develops a method, you know, and then you, you know, because I don't, I remember Pep Guardiola, you know, this ultimate footballer, and, and, and Jurgen Klopp, you know, it probably took them a long time to identify. And now if you, you know, now if you interviewed them, they would have a whole science behind what they do. Uh, and my book, I tried, hopefully, when you read it, to go, that sounds like him. That's what he's like. He's no different. He hasn't tried to make out that he's some sort of rugby genius, because I, uh, I wasn't. Yeah, you do. I mean, you put the spontaneity in it. You put in the moments of of confusion where you've made right decisions, but you also put in moments where you made wrong decisions. I mean, there was a there's a large part of the book where you're discussing, uh, you know, wasps and kind of you know the, the ups and downs, you know, in various different ways. You know, not just stuff on the pitch, stuff that you know that's just all management and kind of how that puts pressure across the team. And then you talk about moving, you know, uh, clubs from one area to another and how that's how the pressure you get from the fans, all of that information kind of takes out the whole kind of, Oh yes. And then I decided to do that. And yeah, that's what I wanted yeah. to do all along. Cause yeah, you know, it's, it's easy to do that. And I think what you also kind of cover, and it's an important thing as well, is that people that make right decisions building on the back of a load of wrong decisions so you can be a coach and see 20 or 30 or 40 different way, the ways that have not worked so you try the 41st time when you tweak it and that could be the thing that makes it happen you've yeah. not built that from scratch you've used other people's mistakes to get to where you need to get to so that was that was really interesting man so the what the flanker podcast is that 
any is, is there anything to do with the book or you just kind of yeah yeah so, so, so series so series one behind the podcast was yeah. uh themes i talked about in the book leadership resilience uh social media dealing with fame the djing element my, my relationship with my my wife um uh, you know my relationship with eddie jones Every guest in that series is related to something in the book. So I've got Nick Fanciulli, the, the you know the, the incredible house DJ, Sick. talking to him about his you know my transition to music, why I like, why I did that, how important the DJing is, what what DJing feels like, and why it's a great um, replacement for uh, you know for rugby. Roman, you know, talking to him about fame, but actually um, you know b- going from nothing to to a, to a celebrity show to the madness of fans to so Chloe. You know, what's it like going out with a sportsman? Is it glitz and glamour? Is it this? You know, and then talking to James Smith about being outspoken. I'm outspoken. We caught controversy just by being ourselves. You know, Ross Edgley talking about resilience and my determination and actually what makes us tick and why we do it. So it's all kind of linked up. What I'd like to do is series two is following the same team, but by three, three or four, I'm, I'm interviewing people in completely different walks of life that I want to learn from. The whole idea of the podcast is very similar to Joe Rogan's concept that I, I want to talk to people I want to learn from and I want to interview them. Who would you, who's like someone that's up there that you'd really like to talk to? Like, you know, no limits. Well, apart anyone. from Marcus Bronzy, um, oh, I think. Uh, season uh, five, may, would, maybe. Let me know. I might be watching the air, five. but crack, crack on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, look, I, I think someone like The Rock, I would love to talk to. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, he, he's someone I'd really like to, to look at how, you know, he's, his, his, uh, the way he's mastered, you know, so many different careers, uh, the constant ability to, 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 to market himself in an incredible way, I think would be really interesting. Ricky Gervais, you know, his, his approach to comedy um, and his success and, you know, his, 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 his late, his late rise to success, I think would be super interesting. Um, there's obviously some sports people as well that I would love to really kind of get into depth with, you know, Conor McGregor. I actually interviewed him once for BT Sport. You know, I love Look, he, he has lots of faults, but his ability to, for, a, for a long time and like Mayweather to talk it up and actually deliver and have a personality as opposed to be what all fans want is, you know, they sort of want someone to talk themselves up but fail or they want someone just to be super humble. Oh, look yeah. how humble he is. Well, humble don't sell tickets. Humble exactly. ain't interesting. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. I mean, I think with what Conor McGregor did is he made UFC into a household name. He, he he made it so that I could say to my mum or dad, oh, you, do you know UFC? Oh yeah, name a fighter. They wouldn't know, be able to name anyone other than Conor McGregor. I don't think I don't think now, with all due respect to the, the quality of fighters that there are out there, I don't think my mum could name another UFC no. fighter. But that's what he did. And when someone's got that in a in a sport where they can elevate it to the point where you're a household name, it's good for everyone. It pushes up everyone in the sport do you know what I mean so yeah. for example even even yourself with like um, good the bag and the rugby uh, uh, people that might not be into the sport can absorb that podcast and be like oh do you know what cool like alright I, I get a bit of this rugby stuff now that might lead to them watching a game supporting a team do you know what I mean yeah. so it's, yeah. it gives people that entry point so it's so important to have those figures in in sports and stuff so yeah it's interesting alright cool well I'm going to I'm going to listen to a few episodes of that pod man it sounds, sounds I, really, I really cool you, Mark, I, I promise you out of all the things I've ever done the feedback from the, the What a Flanker, the podcast, has been, like the book, just very unique, very different. And people are, are really resonating with it because yeah. it's me in a completely different light. I'm, I'm interviewing and I'm, I'm trying, to, you know, trying to get this stuff from these guys. And actually, every guest has been unique and different. And, it, and, it, and hopefully people, people enjoy it. I mean, you know, it's been, I went to number two in all, all categories and podcasts in the world. It's, it's, you know, we're doing some, some big numbers. And I think it's something that's going to build. You know, it's... Um, I just want people to find it interesting. And like me, I'm discovering as I'm going. And that's, that's what I wanted to do. Nice one, mate. Look, look, look. There he is. Can you Hello. He's shattered. He's absolutely knackered. He, I took him for a 5K walk today. And yeah. uh, my mate, Dylan Hartley, has got a beautiful uh, Rhodesian Ridgeback. And he doesn't really play with – we haven't we haven't got many dogs yeah. around this. And he, and, he, and he spent an hour and a half – playing with this Ridgeback like they got on like a house on fire oh, and um, he's now so tired he, he never gets into his own cage yeah because he, he wants to stay out he keeps he's twice he's taking himself off there to have a lie down he is 
bollocks. <laughs> it's so good. funny. And look, this job. is my and then my wife just sits lovingly at the door looking Hello. at him. <laughs> <laughs> is she just there cooing at him like oh cooing at him, yeah, oh. yeah, cooing. She's yeah. like that going, There's my sweetheart. He's had such yeah. a big day. Oh, definitely ginger though. Thanks though. It's just definitely a ginger. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely ginger. <laughs> um right. So yeah, speaking about pogs, so yeah, from what a flank car to your own pod that you got with a missus, man. So yeah, can we talk mm. a bit about that? Yeah, couples quarantine. So, <laughs> you know, basically my wife was kind of, you know, she, she she's extremely intelligent, extremely talented, and is kind of I lower the tone in all the respects of stuff she does. You know, she's sort of a best selling author, you know, training eight hundred people online. And I was like in last lockdown, I was like, Look, Chloe, I love working with you. I want to do a podcast with you. And we talked about what it was about and we we get talked about as being couple goals because we put stuff on social media we take the piss out of each other we have this and in reality we're not couple goals we fight like cats and dogs like everybody does we have our problems but we wanted to create a podcast where we felt couples we could talk about these issues that, that couples face that they don't really talk about that they they're pretend you know there's a large section of society pretending that people don't go to the bathroom and pretending they don't have sex and you know we we talked about that you know what the f- the second show we did was what happens when you first start dating someone you need to go to the bathroom like what, what do you do like there's lads around the country laying awake you know trying not to squeeze out a fart and panicking and having to go to a pub in the morning and you know women as well you know i said that women had it easier my wife was like no 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 because the expectation is that men are gross <laughs> women it, you know it, it's not it's not supposed to do that so we so we we, we sort of started with with a with a bang um and look you know we've had about five or six daily mail kind of headlines on there um but we're not but not intentionally we're just being very honest and open and we and we, we're getting you know i would say we, i'm getting five emails a day from um listeners uh all asking us questions about you know problems they face with their partners dating stuff and else. and we debate it and we're getting guests on we had russell kane on yes they've had jack whitehall matt richardson um you know we had our we had our first kind of gay guy guy called sam dowler talking about the different you know you know my brother's gay and i sort of you know know a bit about their dating world but i wanted to see do the same things apply because we we talked about when you know, and this is wrong. This is what we discovered actually wrongly. The perception is that men have a higher sex drive than women, but actually that's not, it's not the case, but obviously women control the keys to the sex. Right. So I asked Sam, you know, what, what happens when you've got two men and there's no, there's no control. What happens? And it, and he was saying, and, and, he, and he said, it, you know, it literally is like, hi, hi, want to fuck? Like, yeah. And I said, and it's like, it's, that's how quickly it happens. And we were sort of discussing those bits and pieces. And it's been, it's been really informative. We've yet to get a sponsor, funny enough. We've had a few inquiries like, <laughs> hello, hello, fresh. We're like, yeah, we, we'd love to sponsor the show. And, the, uh, and then they listen to an episode like, yeah, um, yeah, we probably, it probably be too controversial. Uh, so, so we're trying to get someone like Durex or like Trojan or, or you know, Ann Summers or something sex related, you know, even KY Jelly would be great um you know some of those something like that to you know to 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 sponsor us yeah man something that to lubricate the bank accounts should we say use of a well exactly (laughs) both ways yeah (laughs) all right mate yeah that sounds class i mean when you say daily daily mail headlines are they just kind of doing the usual daily mail job where they're kind of freaking a couple of things that you say are a bit edgy and kind of you know yes so so basically i'll give you an example my my wife um right has become an agony aunt for the sun a bit like dear deirdre but uh you know for fabulous magazine which is uh, and, and she really loves it her father is richard imadley who is for the telegraph the agony aunt for the telegraph they're both very compassionate um people and have great great advice and actually bizarrely all of our friends think i'm amazing on this podcast and give great advice and chloe has to keep going yeah he does give great advice he doesn't fucking follow it himself. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm definitely do as I say, not as I do. But yeah. Chloe writes for, for the Fabulous magazine. And basically what happened is I did an interview for The Sun for my first, um, for my book when it came out. And the lady from The Sun had got hold of an early transcript of her thing and wasn't supposed to have done this and basically asked us a story. And Chloe had joked about, you know, uh, what you know men freak out about women having slept with loads of people beforehand Yet men go around drilling loads of people and thinking it, you know, and then, you know, when men are like, oh, well, I can't have my missus sleep with a couple of people. You're like, you slept with 500. Like, what? Yeah, what yeah. How have you thought that's bad? But that's hypocrisy. That's another story. So she joked in this article and went, yeah, well, James, you know, James has probably slept with a thousand birds that we know about. Boom. Sun headline. Haskell sleeps with a thousand women. You know, this kind of stuff. And they roll with it, roll with it. So much so that 
I then, I, we've obviously joked about it on the podcast, and Chloe said, yeah, but look, James is always trying to have sex with me at inappropriate times. Like when I'm cooking, I, I was cooking prawn pill pill, which is obviously with hot oil. And so James <laughs> is trying to have sex with me. And, you know, it's very dangerous. So I made a joke about, you know, burning my knob off. Haskell likes freaky sex in dangerous kitchen shag or something like that. And it's like, <laughs> no, that's not what happened. I mean, the fact is I did try and have sex with her while she was making prawn pill pill, but not near the hob and not with my knob out. I said to yeah. her, listen, do you want to come and do a few bits? And she was like, no, I'm cooking, you know, have a, have a minute. Yeah. Fucking hell, timing, James. Fucking hell, those prawns that's are going to get says, fucked that's up. What she, hey, <laughs> she says the same thing. She's like, timing. She's like, you've had all day and you wait for me to pounce on me when I'm trying to cook you dinner. I tell you when I don't feel sexy, when I'm slaving over a hot stove, I don't feel like, whoa. <laughs> wait, yeah, I, I think that's very well. I've never thought what she's thinking. I've never yeah. thought that she's going, do you know what? I'm slaving over a hot stove. But the last thing I want is some big Neanderthal to fucking try it on in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to fuck these prawns up if I'm not careful. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Oh, mate. Exactly. Yeah, well, look, mate, you've been smashing out the content, but have you been getting some R&R in as well? I mean, look, the next gen consoles have dropped. I'm sure you've heard about them. Have you had a dabble yet or what's happening? No. So I'm obviously an Xbox. Well, I've accidentally put myself in the Xbox boat for, for, for years, right? Um, but by Xbox, as I, I have an Xbox. I like an Xbox. I have yeah. nobody from PlayStation ever. So I've not got any of the new stuff. I've got an Xbox One, and during the first lockdown, I played Red Dead Redemption 2, which I never played. And every time Chloe came in, all I was was beating and robbing people. Because <laughs> that's all I did. Like, I did. like, every five minutes, stop, kill someone, rob them, hide a body. And she's like, what is wrong with you? And like, I'd meet a woman, he'd like, punch the woman. She goes, you can't do that. I said, yeah, you can in a video game. And she's like, there's something wrong with you. So I, was, I, beat, I just spent all the time doing that. But I realized I wasn't getting anything done. I've just got uh, Call of Duty Cold War. Yeah. But the problem with the, with the new things is, you know, update with 50 gigabyte update. And I'm like, unless you've got 100 meg broadband, like I can't, I've had the game for three days and I've been unable to play it because it hasn't updated. And I'm like, what the fuck happened to just playing off a CD? Look, I don't get me wrong yet. I, I love Call of Duty, right? But something needs to be done with the game size. Like there are... Enorm- and it's not just I can't, I can't just put it on COD because that's not fair but it's not it's everything yeah every like I'll be honest with you the next gen consoles that I've got are full up right already and that's a terabyte each pretty much and give or take a few hundred gig yeah so something we need to have a big discussion either they need to sort us out with massive storage at a reasonable price don't think that's going to happen soon or they need to work on optimising game size because it's too much at the moment. I get it. We need more quality. We need. We want games to look better, look slicker, but there needs to be a way of optimising. And even, I don't know, would you be up for getting a few discs like they used to do with Final Fantasy? You get like three or four hey, discs. Are you be up for that? Look, look, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not your archetypal gamer, right? Yeah. My, my, I've told you this before. I, I, yeah. I love technology. I'm yeah. a technology whore, right? I have, I've just got myself the new Pioneer uh, CDJ 3000s. I've yeah. got a Pioneer V10 mixer. Uh, I, look, I look at cameras. I've, I've, I've gone on and put uh, the, the, the Mavic Pro 2 in my shopping basket seven times and taken it back out again because I know that I want to, I want someone to use it to film me while I'm doing stuff, not me filming myself. So I, I don't do it. Yeah. I got. I've obviously with the podcasting. I've got you know the new GoPro Hero Nine. They've said I work with them. They sent that to me. I've just got the new uh, media mods. But when it comes to gaming, I sat down the other day and I was like, Do you know what? I haven't done any video gaming for a while. I didn't realize the new Call of Duty app. I've ordered it. I want to be able to put the game in the machine and play the game. Three days. <laughs> I haven't been able to play this. I don't care about the size of content. I want content, but. You know, until this UK gets actual legit decent internet everywhere, and bear in mind, I do live in well, it looks like a bandstand or some sort of blind shop in 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 Northamptonshire. <laughs> but you know, my internet is not is not good enough to do that, and it's and it's fifty gigabyte updates to play that one game, and I still can't play it. So yeah. I haven't looked at the new consoles as to what's going on. But I, I, I don't understand. I would have happily have four discs. Just let me play the game. That's what I want <laughs> to. I want to put out on the. Yeah, yeah, you know. I was going to say, look, he just wants to play, and I get it. We all want to, man. But you, yeah, go on. What's your, what, what? So you've you've have you tried the new Xbox and PlayStation? 
Yeah, man. Um, look, in terms of uh, the consoles, they both kick ass, right? But he- here's where the war is at, right? So obviously, the war is first games. Like, what, what, where, where are the best games? So there's some exclusives that are on PlayStation that are really good. I'll get back to PlayStation in a second. And there's and uh, Xbox have basically bought Bethesda, which is a massive computer games production company. So they're gonna have the power if they wish in the future to have loads of Xbox exclusive games, right? But the thing that people have been speaking about probably more recently this week, because the PlayStation's dropped this week, that's just gone, is the control pad on the PS5. I don't know if you've seen anything about it online, but long story short, it's really got a lot of features in it. So it's got HD rumble, like a rumble in it that feels more unique. It, but the main thing for it is, you know, the triggers when you pull up, yeah. like all those, they're haptic. So you can actually feel like for a shotgun, it's a thicker, harder trigger oh, okay, or for a lighter okay, okay. weapon. And mate, that, there's a little game that comes free with the PS5 called Astro, Astro's World, right? Uh, Astro Bot. And you literally are there just looking at the control pad, being amazed. And I think if they truly manage to harness that when you're playing games, like when you feel like you're pulling a trigger on a bigger gun, it's a harder pull. Or when you pick up something, something happens in the game that the rumble feels right. You know, it's, it's just way more immersive, man. Way more immersive. And the control pad, I thought it felt all right. And then I picked up my PS4 control pad. I was like, nah, the PS5 control pad feels better. Really? Yeah. With that being said, Xbox because it's a, it's not something that's like because the, the units they're there to stay Xbox could come with a better control pad and, you know that could be their next thing and you know we could be looking at upgraded control pads over the next year or so till we see the next gen of console so yeah control pads is is for PS5 that could be winning it for them and they've also got some great uh, exclusives as well they've got Spider-Man which is just bruv it's just you're is playing Spider-Man oh mate you're just playing Spider-Man <laughs> it's, it's awesome like yeah yeah go on because I, I, you know, I, you know, the seminal game for me is Grand Theft Auto. You know, I mean, yeah. like the, you know, like the Red Redemption stuff. That the free yeah. world. Look, I, I never, I never World of Warcraft. I never those things. But the concept of yeah. giant maps where you you could spend, you know, you could spend six months and you still haven't done everything. Yeah. I love that. You know, I can't wait till new the new uh, Grand Theft Auto comes out. Uh, you know, but it takes five years to build them. You know, and the problem yeah. is we are a consumer consumer. Uh, a content hungry nation and everybody wants it out now like I I don't know I'll be interested to see it. I know people like FIFA I just don't really play sports games I just like shooting stuff uh, <laughs> shooting Robin and killing if that's if that's okay um, but I actually talk about Sony I um, they're obviously new mirrorless cameras are incredible yeah. So I've been trying. You know, I've been, I've been Canon. I do a lot of stuff. I got Canon M50 for for kind of the the the, the one the, the main shot, and I use two GoPro Hero nines for for the two shots. Um, but I, uh, the new Sony stuff is good. So I may leave the Xbox path and go, you know, PS5, and you see, get the Sony a, in an AC something or whatever it is, the cameras, because they apparently are the absolute nuts. Yeah, man. Well, listen. In terms of the console wars, it's I think it's still in the air. Well, I think you. If, I don't know. I think if you hang back and wait and see for the next month or so, if you can, you might you might be able to see which ones win it. But I know that there's a lot of people talking about PS this week. But you also mentioned cameras as well. You said the GoPro Hero 9 you've been playing with too, yes. right? So yeah, talk yeah, us so through yeah. that. So the GoPro Hero 9, um, I... I've been working with GoPro for the last four years, uh, uh, officially, but I had, you know, the, the Go, I think I had the hit, you know, the very first GoPro and I've had every iteration up, yeah. up since then. Um, you know, the Hero 9, 5K, uh, you know, they've got obviously um, Time Warp 3.0. They've got um, their sort of, I think it's 12 million megapixel or maybe more uh, camera camera shots. They've got this mod pack. So one of the things that was criticized about GoPro before was sound. You know that kind of that that, that sounds. So I've created these media mods, and they came out due to issues with production uh, uh, and everything else. They never released them. They advertised them, but kind of because of issues, they couldn't ever um, they couldn't ever have them. So basically, with the, uh, the the new Hero Nine, you've got a mod pack, you've got a light on there, you've got a new stand, better shotgun mic. Um, you know the stabilization is insane. So you no longer need a gimbal. You know, even if you're walking, riding, mm. cycling, you never see anything. It's got digital stabilization, which is which is incredible. Um, and all of it makes a massive, massive difference. And I, um, I love them, you know, and, and, and in terms of, you know, they still got 1080p, 25 frames, uh, you know, they've got 30 frames, they've got 250 frames, they've got st- amazing slow motion. And it's, 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 you know, it makes a massive difference. You should strap one on the dog and send it off for a run. I did it yesterday. They've got a thing called a, um, uh, 
oh, what is the hell's the name of their harness? But I used to have it with my old dog. The problem is, is that this one's too small. So yeah. when it ran, it just swiveled down. It was like, you know, <laughs> you your first day of school. So, where the kid, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> well, it's just the first, you know, your first day of school where they put you in oversized clothes, your mother yeah, yeah. into it, and you start tripping up on the shirt sleeves. Yeah. You see these kids. It was too big for him. But it's called, uh, it is a dog harness. And basically, you can put it on the chest or yeah. sit it on the back. I sit it on the back and it, and it, you see it like running towards you, like it wobbles. So it, I, I've had that. Um, but man, I love that the first thing the GoPro, you know, it, I know people talk about iPhones and the fact that, you know, why would you have a separate camera where you can you've got instant digestible content on here? But the fact is the GoPros for me, the quality that they can now film at, the fact they can act, act straight as a webcam, you can live stream directly from them, but also, it's the attachments. It's the fact that you do not want to strap this to your dog. You do not want to put this onto your side of your car. You do not want to take this up, you know, underwater um, is what is what sets them apart for me. And all my lifestyle stuff, they work, they work really nicely. So the Hero 9 is by far and away the best kind of sports active camera. And now with these, these media mods, it's become a really, really quality, you know, reputable blogging tool. Because, you know, everyone you see sort of your Casey Nysets you know, with, with the things on stuff here, you know, you've got the GoPro mod, it's in your hand, you, you know, super simple, uh, you know, POV or, or you know, or, or um, sort of, you know, uh, uh, other ways of, of looking at it are, are amazing. Nice. I think that's the key. I think the next step with kind of cameras and stuff is is to make sure that we have that high end. Like you, you just picked up a digital SLR that we can have that kind of level of quality, but in something that's much more portable. Uh, and do you know what you got me thinking? We might be getting our hands on some 360 de degree cameras soon. It'd be great for you to strap one of those on the dog and send it running around. That would look mental. Yeah. I mean, I had the GoPro Fusion, the 360, yeah, uh, right. and I used it. Um, and sorry, sorry, I had the Fusion, and then I had the, the GoPro Max, yeah. which I basically used in Tokyo in Japan. So if any of your listeners want to have a look at them, um, go through my Instagram. Uh, you know, it's incredible at the Shibuya Crossing in Japan with a 360. And again, incredible blogging tool. The fact that, you know, you could have it 360 or you could switch it to to how you wanted it was, was, was amazing. And, and the, yeah, the GoPro Max is an unbelievable bit of kit. Decent man, decent. And uh, you upgraded your DJ kit, I hear. Then, pardon? You update upgraded your DJ kit, then the Pioneer kit. You just told us. Yes, about. yeah, 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 yeah. I basically. Um, so I've so I've been working with with Pioneer for a little while. Um, I you know I, I really sort of you know Denon I think are are kind of new uh, pretenders to the throne. I think they're doing some amazing stuff, and they've actually because of the uniqueness and the way that, you know, that the, the, they sort of stormed in with some equipment that, that just had never been seen before. Um, and actually, I, I got, uh, this is, wasn't prep, but there's something called the, 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 the Denon Prime Go, which is a portable system, which is basically a full professional um, setup, which you can take on, your, on the go. So when I go on, when I go on tours or traveling with Chloe, you don't have a full setup, but you want all the actual club functions, not on a small shitty controller you want something you actually you know you could put a set together on this and then go straight into a club and do it i got myself that the other day but the pioneer stuff they just launched the new cdj 3000s which have been i think maybe five six years or maybe 10 years and make i'm not exactly sure that the date in them but they are incredible bigger screens uh, much more impactful certain like amazing features like key um key syncing so you know normally you, can, you know if you've got tracks that don't um that uh, clash with keys, you can hear it, it sounds bad, you can now do that on the on the fly. You know, you can now listen to and prep tracks. So if you've got two tracks playing, you could never listen to that, you know, where that track went. But if you, with, the, with the, one of the mixes, you can put your finger ahead and go, oh Christ, this, this song suddenly goes into a hor horrible vocal. This is gonna clash, bigger job wheels. And then they've got the new V10 mixer they call The Beast, which is a six channel mixer, which is so good for kind of, music creation so you know you're suddenly got six channels to work with but you can also affect a separate channel so for example if i having two tracks playing and i want to add an echo to one of the tracks it will send that echo to another channel which you can then re-affect so it's kind of like these, these multi-layered abilities the fact you can then plug in third party equipment to it but it's just you've got a four channel eq on it as well for getting that sort of systematic and kind of really smooth mixing. Um, so I kind of, yeah, I've been doing some work with it. And the 3000s, I've had my, my I sort of still work with my DJ teacher, who's also a, a producer that I've actually got my first um, 
track coming out next year that's been signed on a record label, label which is quite cool. We, we, we put together in lockdown. Um, and so we had him around yesterday. He hadn't seen the new 3000s. So we just had a jam and we used the, 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 the DGS 1000 sampler. So yeah. we're basically making, making a track as we're going along. So we put a new kick in, cut claps and hats. As we're mixing songs, we're just having a rave up, mate. It's, um, it's great fun. Sick, man. That sounds really good. And I think with Pioneer, what one thing that they are good at is that they have really powerful products, but they're very easy to kind of use. I feel like when you know one Pioneer turntable, you can get onto a next one and kind of understand it. And don't get me wrong. I love I loved them and products and they're great, but I feel like they take a lot. There's a bigger learning curve for you to kind of understand what how to work with them because there's a lot going on in terms of the button yeah it's it's a difference between the industry standard and something else you know what's actually interesting about denon is because the excuse people give you is if you walk into a club nine times out of ten they're going to have a pioneer setup yeah and they did a really clever campaign called change a rider denon and and because they're computer i mean i think before the 3000s you know they're 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 six thousands they the the denon six thousands i'm not sure what the model number is were you know light years ahead they were they could connect to the internet. You yep. could download music straight to them. They had two layers. So all you needed was two decks and you had four decks built into them. They had all these kind of incredible features that were, it was a bit like, I'll give you an example, you know, the Android and iPhone battle. 100%. So, yeah. Yeah, so so basically our iPhone will come out with facial recognition, all this stuff. And then you get the Android people going, yeah. We've had that for like six years. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? But the point is, is that no one cares you had it for six years because it's wrapped up in an Apple product and you know that's what you're going to get. It's a bit like what's happened with the Denon thing is that Denon have created a, a superior product in those 6,000s, have pushed the market, have, have, have you know, changed the way people are looking at DJing with, with control pads and the, the multi-layering of decks and everything else and new effects, which has then pushed Pioneer to... To then, you know, to, to, to develop and have a new product. But what Denon did quite cleverly was is that people were using the excuse, well, are you, you know, they're not in a club, but they then set up a whole set of retailers, for example, around the UK and, and lenders. So actually, if you want them on your rider, they will get them put in. But I, you know, I, I just love Pioneer. I, you know, there's some, some great guys at the Pioneer team that I've, I've spent time with and they sit and we do Zoom calls over utilizing the equipment because I'm a techno keynote. There's no point having, you know, a six channel mixer. If you're going to use one channel, you don't know how to use it. You know, there's no exactly. point having, a, a, you know, a, 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 you know, the new 3000 if you're not going to use all the features. And, um, you know, the, the beauty of it is, is that with the 3000, they've kept the bottom half uniform. So even if you'd never used them before, you walk into a club, it's a familiar look and feel. Yeah. But then what they've done is, is that they've then gone and looked at different workflow changes. They've removed buttons that people don't use, but they've kept features in there. And they've actually made them uh, computers now. So, with firmware updates, you could suddenly ha- start having a unique uh, update, which is essentially what they do with the iPhones, you know, where they say, by the way, look, with these features aren't quite here, but we're going to go nuclear and the chip we've got in, you know, could land the space shuttle, but we're yeah. probably only using 10% of it, but we're going to send you a, um, we'll send you a thing. But by the way, just before you actually be able to use it, the battery's going to die because we couldn't work that part out. So you're going to have to get an upgrade <laughs> anyway. So we won't talk about it. Oh, we've made the battery bigger. So it'd be great on your current screen size, but the screen's now twice the size. So yeah, it's going to rinse <laughs> yeah. the battery. Oh, what? <laughs> and, if you, and if you do, if you do this new update, it'll be great because it'll use the new chip, but the battery isn't too powerful enough to use the chip. So we're going to have to do another one. And you're like, hold on a minute. Surely can't we just have everything that you wanted to put in the thing at the time that all works, you know, yeah. but that's, that's the beauty of technology, is it? But also remember they made that, that company years ago made that, that everlasting light bulb. Do you remember there is that thing? You remember that they made the everlasting light bulb. They came up with like, this is a light bulb. And then someone turned around and went, that's fucking great, pal. But people are going to buy one light bulb and never <laughs> buy anything again. Yeah, so exactly. now we build shit to break because yeah. you need to keep a consumer market because there is no point having a car that, that's going to last forever because you'll never buy a new car. And people forget that. Like, oh, I think building ships, build quality has gone down. It's like, no, no. Shit's going to break now all the time. Batteries are going to run down over a period of time because they probably could. You know, they reckon they've had um, sustainable energy for oh, yeah. about 20 years. You know, hydrogen yeah. fusion, all this kind of stuff. They've done it, but they're like, fuck that. We're making way out of oil and everything else. Let's go through all the other stuff. Hydro, solar, sell the shit out of that. And then one day we'll come up with a, with this perfect solution. A hundred percent. I think about it. If you have enough solar panels, right? I don't know how many that is, 
that surely is enough to supply whatever your electric electrical need is. But no one's done the maths or no one's sharing the maths, right? Well, you know what, James, you need, all right, it's going to cost you a lot, but you need like 500 solar panels, but you never have to pay an electricity bill again. No one's talking to me in that kind of plain English. Do you know what I mean? That's how I want someone to explain yeah. it to me. You live in a two bedroom flat, you use this much electricity. Yeah, you probably need that many panels or a wind or, a you know, a, 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 sort of like a windmill or something like that. But, yeah. you know, who knows? I've seen quite a few solar panel farms up up and about recently apparently you can make a decent bit of cash off it as well if you if you put yourself in the right place i've not got that kind of land though i don't have that kind of land either <laughs> I, I think um it's interesting as well because when people get in on the old biomass i've got a mate who's got a biomass thing to put in and again you know you have to be so you have to be so yeah. spot on with this stuff you know yeah. what are you burning what is the wood chip thing who are actually making the money and i took look ultimately we want to save the environment and that's and that's yeah. the most important thing because we're only getting one. We're only getting one planet, and we are bugging yeah. it. And and uh, I don't think it is possible to turn back time or turn back the tables. But I think we should have a good go at it. Like I've become obsessive about recycling, actually, and I wish someone would invent some super, um, super good way of, of sorting it all out. Well, well, when you say obsessive, what are you doing? Are you peeling like the paper off your tins and making sure that's separate from them as well? Or what? Oh, oh no! Well, well, let's go steady. I mean, I'm not. You know, I'm, 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 I mean, what I'm saying is, I'm washing out the tins. That's good. And I'm recycling. And I'm recycling yeah. everything that I can recycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. The, the cycling conundrum that upsets me is I put it in the separate bins, and now we've now we've gone. Okay, now they've gone from separate the red and blue bins. They've now just gone to a big wheelie bin, right? right. So that's fine. But then they just fuck the wheelie bin in the back of the truck with everything else. And you're like, <laughs> what? I don't understand. And the thing is, I think it's, I think you'll find like a bit like, you know, the horse meat scandal in the supermarkets. Yeah. There's about to be the biggest scandal. I mean, I know there's not really important in comparison to COVID where they are going to find they're just fucking this all in a truck and yeah. stuffing it in a lab. And there's actually no need to sort it out. Doesn't yeah. matter what color bin you do it. It's just making people feel like they're doing something. But there's Terry down the scrap, you know, down, down the landfill. He's just plowing it, it into a field. Chuck yeah, it, chuck it, chuck it, it There you go. Yeah, chuck it in and fuck it. Yeah. Oh, it's got, you know, like, and then that's, that's my concern. And I, I, because it got me thinking, and I started following David Attenborough, like most people did on Instagram, because A, he's one of the biggest legends that ever lived, and B, you, you can't get enough of that voice. And the fact he talks about the planet, and then you look at the amount of packaging and consumables we have. And I yeah. I had to get two of these giant recycling wheelie bins just for the volume of kind of, and imagine, you know, being a, t you know, a technology podcast and review thing, the amount of stuff you're getting sent, boxes. the amount of stuff, you, boxes and boxes and boxes. Uh, Mate, you can't you can't open a dinner without having like uh, you know twelve kilos of, of packaging. Well, I just you know what happened to glass? You know, uh, with plastic <laughs> bottles. Like I don't you know I know people dropping shit, but I'd rather yeah. eat. I'd rather have glass. But then people said paper bags, and we've got to cut down trees. But then why can't we replant them? I mean, we've yeah. made life so difficult for ourselves. Yeah, do you know what though? I'm waiting for somebody to start complaining about masks because I don't know where my this because i've got like masks that i reuse but i've also got a few disposable ones in case i get caught short and i'm i realize that i don't know how that's made i don't know what's in it i'm seeing them like on the floor litter everywhere because i think people are like dropping their masks and going fuck it i don't want to pick it up because you know covid in it might be might be get catch some covid on the floor how much like plastic and shit is being used on masks that isn't like you know recyclable i'm curious i'm waiting for that to cut that scandal to drop obviously at the moment what's important is making sure that you stay safe but you yeah. know mate, the masks are going to be killer those, those medical masks are i i i'll be honest with you that is the next thing i can't wait to see a seal choking on one of them and the top of the, of the sea covered in masks because it's going to happen like the yeah, volume man. of stuff we're getting through you know and also the thing with the masks is again we talked at the top of the show i mean actually i saw a report the other day researched under that they actually don't do anything that's okay. the bizarre thing the science they, they the bizarre they said that they do not protect the wearer in any way against covid and that it's actually not there the problem is, is that, you know, was that a news article? Was that, you know, it was a news article. Was it bullshit? Was it research? I don't, I don't know. It's better just to make sure that we're trying to protect people and do what you think people are doing. So I'm not, not wearing a mask. I'm doing as I'm told. But yeah. then the other thing with those masks is the ones, the medical ones, they only last, I think, for four hours and then you have to change them. And I swear there's people coming to the door with fucking frayed masks, hot, last night's dinner on it. And you're like, bud, you're actually, I would have thought, due to respiration and the amount of bacteria that's in your mouth and nose and everything else, that, that would then sit in a mask, probably more likely give you more problems. If you think about the science behind it, if you don't clean them and change them, you know, and in a mask, you're breathing stuff into the mask. So it's sticking to it. 
<laughs> Mate, I think it probably make you more ill. But again, I don't know. But I know you do have to change them. That is recommended by the by the actual makers. Yeah, wash your masks, man. You wouldn't wear your socks or your underpants for a week. Well, not 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 after university at least. All right, if you're at university, you're yeah. disgusting. But uh, you know, I've seen it happen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Universe students just do whatever they can. Yeah, know, yeah. Kind of given. I've been hearing the stories about these poor fuckers being held up in their halls as well and them like trying to break out. Poor guys, yeah. man. Why, guys. why send them back to why send them back to uni? And also think I think university's dead. Why would you pay 10 grand a year to uh, to go to university when you can sit at home and do the course for, for do the course on your on your own just pay half the price? Yeah. Or, or just move over near a uni, get a little part-time job. You can take part in all of the you know, like 1 pound Wednesdays and all those kind of student yeah. nights out. Learn, learn by yourself and have a good time. Anyway, James, before we start putting the rest of the world to rights, um, thank you very much for joining us here on How to Kill an Hour. Should we send everyone over to your Instagram? Is that where we should be checking you? Is that where you're putting up content right now? Do you know what? I'm absolutely smashing YouTube at the moment. Okay. Uh, so I've got YouTube under, under channel. Uh, it's under the James Haskell. I basically lost the logins for James Haskell. And now it's the James Haskell. I've had it for like 10 years. Um, so yeah, just search James Haskell. You'll find my channel there. Um, and my Instagram, at James Haskell, uh, which has got basically all my daily content. Those are kind of the ones I, I filter. We go, I go on Twitter, but Twitter's full of trolls and really angry middle-aged white people. And I just don't really like it. You know, yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's not even get started on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, yeah, but yeah, um, honestly, yeah, make sure you check out uh, What Flanker as well, mate, because that is um, our mate class book. Thank you for that as well, man. And yeah, we'll make sure we put links to all your content in the show description. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. 